Hi everyone, um, we have this um, really pretty page um, from World of Flowers actually um, for our planner page today and I thought I would just have a go at just colouring and chatting and um, having some fun with it. I haven't got a massive plan for it but I've decided on using my Castle Gart Castle Arts gold pencils. I haven't used them loads. Thought it'd be fun to uh, have a go with them. Um, I brought in a new pencil sharpener because my sharpener seems a little blunt, but uh, that's sort of neither here nor there. And uh, I thought we could just sort of work down the page really, and uh, just see how far we get. Now the um, I'm, yeah, as you can see, I'm going to zoom in. The page is symmetrical. So I think it sort of makes sense for me to um, not do both sides. Um, if I just do the one side, um, probably actually the left might be better because it's further away from the coil. And uh, just work through like that really. Uh, just checking I've got what I need, which I do. And I'm going to start by sharpening a pencil. It's all good fun, isn't it? I've decided to make my little butterfly quite vibrant. This sharpener works fine with these pencils. I find the soft touch, cadmium orange deep, don't necessarily all sharpen very nicely. But these have always been really nice in the sharpener. Nice isn't a good word, is it? They just seem to sharpen like butter really smoothly. Whereas the um, soft touch, the wood seems a bit more splintery. So that's the start of that. Um, I have to put the pencils, that's it. Make sure I keep them aside so we know what colours I've been doing. Um, I'm going to use another orange shade to finish off those wings. I think they all need sharpening. This is the um, marigold and we'll just take that out to the outside. It's clouded over now, it's been quite a sunny day. And uh, it's now cloudy. But uh, it's sort of about 3, 3.15, I'm guessing. Not entirely sure. Now the little body of the butterfly is so small and cute. I'm not sure how much we'll be able to do. Um, I think I'm going to, yeah, let's try this one. Um, I usually like to try and make it look so that the body is... No, I'm changing my mind, hold on. Colour-wise. <laughs> um, I usually try and do the body so that it looks like it's reflecting the light but it's really diddy so we'll see we'll use the slate grey which is a sort of um, brownie um, I'm just trying to change my light it seems a bit dark sorry a brownie grey now what I try and usually do is go around the head and leave a light a bit in the middle so that it looks slightly more rounded and the same with the body but I'm not sure I can achieve that in such a little space I've tried it hasn't really worked we've just filled in the space with slate grey which is fine with me now um, I just want to find my eraser one minute I've brought it through with me here we go sorry my um my Tombow Mono Zero, it's my go-to eraser, it can do all their little bitty details. Slightly smudge that, but not too badly. And my brush. Now what I like to do with the butterflies, I like a little black outline and some dots. But I don't think we can, this is such a small one, we're not going to achieve that. So what I'm going to do instead is do some black dots. I'm just checking I've picked up the right pencil, which I have. This is the ivory black. And what I'm going to do is, I'm not sure if you can see, but drawn on the butterfly are a few lines and dots. And I'm just going to go over them in black so they stand out a little bit more. And that will be how I just add a detail to my butterfly. Okay, next we have this stem of flowers coming down here and I want to move away from um, orange and I'm thinking maybe maybe purple. Purple and orange I think work together. My son thinks I'm bonkers. He's like, no mother, really not, but I think they do. So I'm just grabbing the heather purple. Yet again, she's sharpening. 
and uh, let me just show you there he is Heather Purple and I'm just going to go around the base of these quite hard so quite a lot of layers here and then just less towards the tip so it fades just a little bit and the same with this one I want to try and make this one look more faded at the tip because we have this little piece at the back which I want to do quite dark so it looks like it's behind I think you can see that and then the same with this one so dark at the bottom then light as we go up and then this bit quite dark now I do think that that looks a little bit messy as I faded it I can see pencil crumbs and bits of white paper and all sorts going on but I'm going to I think I will use a blending pencil we've got some on this side as well I do these in the same way I had not sure what blending pencils work with these castles I'm not sure I've ever tried one to be honest so that will be an interesting experiment in just a moment. I've decided I'm going to do this side as well. It's going to be a lot easier for me to remember what I've done. If I just quickly colour it, it's not going to take me long. And uh, I can chat to you while I colour, because you know what I'm doing now. So I hope you, I, some of you might be following along, or taking some inspiration anyway. I know some of you watch first, then watch again and colour along, or you just colour along with certain ones that you um, fancy doing. Obviously, you're not going to have every book that I uh, that I colour in. If there are um, particular books or pictures that you really want to see me do, I have done a video showing what books I own. And I've done a flip through of every book that I have, so you can easily find out on my channel um, which books I have. Now, I'm just going to brush. Now, we could burnish or blend using a paler colour, but I don't really want to change the colour. I quite like the vibrancy of that purple. So I am going to try a blending pencil. Um, I think I will try the Prisma one because I think the pencils are similar-ish, so it should work. So we'll see, I'm just sharpening, it should be merrily sharpening. So, yeah, that looks like it's working to me. Yes, definitely, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna move along just doing each one. Now, uh, advantage of using a blender as well is that it saves your pencil because if you keep um, if you use a pencil to blend you have to replace that pencil whereas if you use a blender you don't now if you're using an expensive brand of pencils and your blender is cheaper then that's all well and good um, it obviously depends on what you're using um, actually this blender is probably dearer than the castle pencils but I think it's doing exactly the job that I want it to do so I am very happy now we do have two florals here and here and I think I'm looking at the picture is going down we've got some other florals here they're not the same so I think what I'm going to do is do these two in their own little independent color and I quite fancy a sort of pinky purple I don't know whether we're going to stick with pinks and purples I might I'm not sure yet so I'll sharpen. Yes, yeah, so anyway, as I was saying, if there's anything you want me to do, tutorial-wise, a particular book... Oh, I've broken my pencil. Oh. Sorry, I have to resharpen. A particular book or a particular page, you know, do let me know. Um, I can tell you vaguely what I've got. I've got a lot of Rita Berman. I've got her seasons book but not all the separate seasons just the compilation book this really doesn't want to sharpen very well i'm going to put it to one side and choose a different color because these have a little tendency to do this and um, my derwent 
the sharpener works really well. So I've just moved to a slightly different shade, which is purple. I was going to do purple light, but we're doing purple now. And I'm going to make it a little bit darker on the top, I think. So, yes, so I've got um, on the go. See, I really only want to do tutorials from the books that I've got on the go. So, sort of famous authors, Johanna Basford. I've obviously got this planner going, and I've got her miniature Enchanted Forest and Secret Garden, a Lost Ocean, and um, World of Flowers. And Ivy, those are hers that I've got going. Okay, let's do some greenery and stems. What I was thinking was it might add some coherence to the page if we kept the greenery to the same shades. And I'm thinking with these pinks and purples, the sort of bluey greens are usually work um, really nicely. Um, I'm just looking at what I have got here. I'm looking to see if I've got a sort of viridian type colour. Uh, no. What's that one? Okay. What's that? Right. I think I'm going to use the thalo green to start with. Of course it needs to sharpen. And I use that for all the stems. Now these stems are very slim, which is why I needed a sharp pencil. I'm just going to keep it plain. There isn't a lot of space for me to be able to do very much with this. Yes, yeah, so those are my Johanna Baspers. As I say, Rita, I've got her land, her water, Europa, and... Um, uh, compilation book Millie Marotta I've got Wildlife Wonders and um, Wildlife Wonders and Secrets of the Sea um, Kirby Roseanne I've got Worlds Within Worlds I'm going to do these ones I'm just going to use this dark colour to do all the all the veins that are marked so Kirby Rizan, um, Worlds Within Worlds and Imagimorphia. Um, what other sort of famousy ones I've got? I've just had a few new ones, but I'm not confident in those yet. So I'm not going to... Uh, um, oh, I've got RJ Hampson's Night Garden. I'm quite happy with that one. I've done a picture in that, so now I'm happy to do I'm going to do a tutorial actually soon from that one anyway. Um... I've got a few other new ones which I need to learn so I think it's nice doing all these stems in the same colours there are so many it's a little bit confusing as to which is which I don't even know where that stem is going it just yeah seems to be um, not very good at staying in the lines it seems to be a bit random anyway um, who else have I got that's famous uh, I don't know but uh, as I say, I've got a video showing all my books and I do flip throughs of them all. Um, so uh, I can certainly have a go. Oh, I've got the Ink House by Rory Dobner. That's another one on my list to do. I ran a request, so I'm going to be doing one of those. See, where is that stem going? No idea. And Ah! That stem is those, and that stem curls under there and goes up to that one, maybe? Um, anyway, so yes, the ink house I'm going to do one soon. Some of the pictures are quite detailed and um, big, but I found a small one that I'm going to start with for you. I have done the lion door knocker on the front, but not as a video, as a step-by-step -step written tutorial on my blog. If you haven't discovered my um, website, there is a link down in the description, um, rachelhendersoncolouring.co.uk, nice and easy. And um, there's a blog, and within the blog there are some written tutorials. You can find a category 
for written tutorials and these are um, the, um, they have photographs and written instructions rather than being a video. Um, I put them up because I thought there might be people who don't like videos who might prefer to have something like that but I don't really know um, I haven't had loads of traffic on my website so I'm not sure whether it's worth persevering too much I know um, I, it was something I was able to do when um, I'm looking for a light thallo green I've got a thallo turquoise I think we we'll use that um, it was something I was able to do when I couldn't film sort of weekends, holidays, that sort of thing when the children are busy <clears throat> um, recording their own videos and I have to be quiet or things like that in here I'm going to make a darker a bit near the bottom and lighter towards the edge like that and uh, so I was able to make some then and uh, just trial it and see and there's a few there there's um I can't remember what I've got there actually. There's various little little items that you can do. Probably mainly ones that I've done videos for as well. Um but uh, just a bit of fun. And there are other articles like how to regain your mojo if you lose it, how to tackle a tricky colouring page or how to choose one. Um I can't really remember everything that I've written about. Being a um freelance writer by trade. I yeah uh, I can write for England, um, I can talk for England too. So <laughs> as my friend always tells me, I can talk for England. It's quite funny, <laughs> but uh, so uh, I just talk like I write <laughs> on and on and on, and write like I talk on and on and on. So it's quite useful um, job to have really. I haven't had a lot of work in lately though. Um, which has been great because it's uh, freed me up some time to make lots of videos. However, um, it does uh, reduce my income, but I'm very, very fortunate in that my husband has had a pay rise. So uh, we're very lucky. We ne realise a lot of people haven't, and a lot of people are finding things tricky. But we're lucky. Right, we're going to do these three here. <clears throat> um, whoa. I put my pencil down, it started sliding. Um, I'm thinking a pinky colour might be nice. And I found this one. This is called French Rose. And look, mm, I like it. So I'm going to give him a sharpen. And what I'm going to do is do the main part of the petals ooh, with this. So if you look at each um, flower, let's start over here actually. This part, um, this main part, is what I'm going to do with the French rose. So I'm going to layer it up quite a lot here and then less towards the tip. Now I haven't gone over with my um, blender with over those leaves but it could do with it really as will these petals and everything else. I'm not going to spend time blending everything. Um, I'm, I'm just going to leave it. I might come back to it at the end and blend if I think it needs it but uh, it's just going to take up time so it's just for you you know if you think he always needs blending do go ahead and, um, and do it so yeah I'm so lucky to have so many colouring books and I'm also trying to decide which one to finish next I had been aiming to finish um, Rita Berman's um, Seasons book her compilation book um, because I'd done a lot of pages in there over Christmas because there were lots of Christmassy images. But I've got loads of pages still to do. Um, and I've got some books that I have only done a couple of pages in that are actually would take less time to finish than that one. So I'm not sure whether to sort of aim to finish a shorter book, if that makes sense. Um, it sounds a bit... I'm a strange person. You know that if you've watched my video. <laughs> but I like um, completeness. I like the feeling of finishing a book. It's lovely. Um, obviously, I don't want to rush books and finish them for the sake of it and not have them looking the way I want them. But um, on the other hand, when I have lots of unfinished books, I feel nice to sort of finish them. So I've already finished three books this year, two of which I got for Christmas. So um, I'm trying to think of the next one to sort of finish, really. 
and uh, it's a bit yeah I'm not sure um, I've got some which have only got I've got less than 40 pages so um, a lovely elephant book but I don't know if I want to finish it because it's such a lovely book I sort of feel like I want to enjoy it for longer if you know what I mean which is that sort of idea I guess I'm just moving a few pen Ugh. I'm trying to balance my pencils <laughs> they don't like it okay I'm gonna I've just grabbed something this is the purple deep and I'm going to use it for the outside and for the centers okay so for the outsides I'm just going to do a layer it looks really red this it looks like the um, polychromos magenta I think it'll work though I have got a swatch chart in front of me but I just am not looking at it at all which is probably not the best idea but you know so what and sort of just go for it it's what I normally do I just happened to swatch these um, because there was a swatch chart in the tin otherwise I don't normally do it at all so uh, but I think I'm going to swatch my new um, Prismas which I would have had by now the time this video goes out now on these, oh, well, let's do this one, because I want to find out whether they work with white pen on them. Because I did that with these, let me show you. Here's my swatch chart. And uh, you can see this one here, it's gone slightly pink. And um, I think that one as well. So I wanted to test whether I could get away with putting a white pen so I put a white dot on every one to see whether it, um, whether the pigment went on it or not. And uh, it was quite useful. So it means now if I'm thinking I want a pink flower with a, most it's all the pinks. So if I want a pink flower and put some white dots on it, I can use that swatch chart to make sure I choose the right shade that won't make the white dots go pink. And although sometimes if the white dots do go pink it looks okay, it isn't always the look you're going for. Right, the centres. I want to make it look as if this circular piece is a little bit higher than these petals here. So I'm going to colour them so a little bit darker in the middle than the tip. And I'm hoping that will help to give the impression that there's a little bit of shade or shadow there from that centre bit. It may not work, it's a small space, it's quite difficult to uh, get the idea across, but that's my aim. And I'm thinking about what colour to do those centres. Mm, I think we'll go back to the, um, to the French rose that we use for the petals and use that for the centres. That might be nice. There we go. I just realised I'm a bit wonky. Hmm. Okay. And this one looks a bit paler than the others. Hmm. There we go. Okay. And now we have leaves around these flowers. Um, so we're going to go back to the colours, <clears throat> excuse me, that we chose for our leaves. So we've got our fallow, fallow green to start with. And what I'm going to do is do the bottoms of the leaves and the fallow green, just fade it up like that. Do the same for this one and all of them, essentially. I'm hoping, just thinking, as I'm colouring, we've got enough shades for all of this page, but maybe we could do some blues as well. If I do want to do blues, I'll need to introduce them quite soon. I think what I'll do is count how many floors we've got. We've got those. One, two, three. Oh, lots. Mm. Yeah, maybe we will make these bluebells. 
Okay, so I've done that thalo. Oops, and I'm going to grab the the thalo turquoise and go over to so start at the tip and then take the colour down. So, whoops. So we blend it all together. These two colours work well together. So get a nice blend. Okay, let's let's do now all the stems are gonna be in our fallow green, so I'm not gonna colour any more. So we've got all these stem work and I shall do that at my in my own time and we'll find these. Now I really want a sort of purpley or dark blue, I think, to go with the colours we've got already. Let me have a look. I think the ultramarine might be a good choice. Sorry, I'm reaching across for my sharpener. It will be quite dark. They won't really look like bluebells. It's gone very wobbly. I'm going to need my other sharpener. I'm just trying to fade the colour, just checking you can see, as I go down towards the base. As I say, it's not really going to look like a blue bar, it's not the right shade of blue. But I don't think that matters. It doesn't look like a blue bell anyway, I've got some in my garden, they don't look like this. And we'll do these two the same. That little bit at the top, I will just do with the same colour green as I do the stem because it's small, it's going to be difficult to sort of get a different colour in there really. I try to just put some more layers on at the top. I want it to look like it fades down. I'm actually going to grab my blender and blend them all a little bit, do a bit of blending. Now, do be careful when you're blending because the tip of the blender gets covered with the pencil. You'll see this, I'll show you. So it's blue. It's not actually that blue. I'm going to do these as well, just while I've got the blender out. It won't take very long. I do need to keep an eye on the time though because I must make sure that I don't get carried away and forget to cook tea. <laughs> Children will not be happy if they come home and there's nothing to eat. Well, they won't be that. They'll just be hungry. They won't be cross, but they'll be hungry. And hungry teenagers are not the most fun creatures in the world, are they? So, uh, and it's interesting because everyone always asks me if they eat lots because they're tall. They're both around six foot tall. But no, they don't. They just have three meals a day and a sort of normal adult size meal but um but they're not they're um slim so and they're not muscular or anything. There we go. Now let's move on to these. Now these look like gooseberries, but we have no other sort of berries on this page at all. So I'm a little bit intrigued as to how to colour them, but I've decided that I'm going to look for a, um, what was I going to use, what's that colour, Venetian blue, this sounds interesting, I've actually moved this Venetian blue into my purples, I'm just look, trying to find the colour actually on my, on my swatch chart. Oh no, it's really pale. That's not what I want. I want a dark colour. Let me see. We've got a dark purple. We've got heather purple. It's our darkest purple. Hmm, we've got indigo light. That's quite dark. It's blue. Don't really want them in blue. Purple deep aubergine. 
Yum, 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 yum. Oh dear, I can't make up my mind. Um, I think I will just go for... Mm, I know. Let's make them into buds of these and do them do them this colour. Let's do them the, um, the French rose. That's easier. So what I'm going to do is make them very dark around there and then less towards the middle so they look like they've got a bit of a shine in the centre. Do all of them the same. Now the little bit at the bottom that looks like a flower, because I guess these are um, berries really, um, I will do in the green colour, the stem colour, which is fallow, fallow green, and also the stalk, of course. I know I've gone over there. I don't think it matters. There we go. So I don't think these are buds. I definitely think they are berries. And if I had another set of pencils nearby, if I had my castle um, soft touch, I would do these in mulberry. But um, I don't. I don't know if there's a darker purple in the um, in the gold 150 or 120, 120 set, but um, anyway, it's fine. We've done them like that now. So let's move along. Let's move along this way, and we have these. Now these leaves. <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to do them all the same as I did these. So slightly darker. At the bottom with the fallow green and then from the top downwards with the um, fallow turquoise. So it's all going to be very similar. I'm not going to show you any more leaves. Got these and I think I quite like to do them in a nice lightish blue. So, oops, I'm going to use the cerulean blue middle to do this. And I'm going to keep it really simple. Dark at the top and light towards the tip. Really easy. There we go. What time is it? Sorry, I'm going to just paranoidly check. Talking about time and then I... Ooh. Now I'm okay for a bit. I think what I'll do is I'll show you all the flowers and uh, leave it at that. So there's that one. I'm going to do the one on the other side. I am repeating. I know I said I wasn't going to, but makes it be easier for me. It means that when I finish all I have to do is the leaves and the greenery and uh, I know what colours I'm doing that. Whoops! My book wants to move. Stay still little book. Now I will um, blend that. <coughs> Excuse me to make it neater. Right I think it's time we need some purple. So I'm going to choose. That's really pretty. What's that? Move deep. And it's that sort of colour. So we're going to be doing uh, let's level it up these. Okay. So I'm gonna do these big petals. I'm gonna go around the edge, the hard layer of the mauve deep, and then reduce my layers to make it lighter in the middle just so it looks a little bit different to the others. Now we have another set of petals or leaves here um, and we have the centre which I haven't tackled I think. I might use another shade of purpley pink for the um, for these rather than doing green. We have got a lot of green in this picture so I think we don't need to overdo the green. There we go and just trying to work out what is that? Mm. What do you think it is? See this is this is part of this leaf. I'll just colour these when I'm contemplating. And is it a bit of this, one of these sort of leaves? Hmm. I've coloured this page before. I 
can't think what I did with that bit. Hmm. I think maybe if I just do it in this pinky colour, it will just sort of disappear. <laughs> it will blend away, you won't see it. Mm. Mm. I'm going to do this side while I think about it. So this is where I could do the being alive and you could all tell me. But I can't. I've sort of spoken to my son about how to do lives and I can't do it um, in this room because I don't have a computer, which is nice. I have my tablet, which is what I just used to look at the time, but I don't think we can easily connect up like that. I need to, um, because unless I record on my tablet, which isn't good quality, I um, need uh, some software to put my camera through and it's all quite complicated so uh, I mean he does it you see my son so he knows well both my sons do one sets it up there so he knows what to do um, but um, it's also a bit scary and what if I have a loud sneeze I won't be able to pause I suppose I might be able to mute don't know how to mute. I'm gonna do it like this. I have no idea what it is. It does look like the shape of that. Um, and hopefully it'll just sort of look like it's part of that plant and you won't really notice it. Okay, so that is the mauve deep. And woo, my pencils are rolling. Um I think I'm gonna use the cobalt purple which looks a very similar colour. Let me have a quick look. Yeah. With for the other for the centres and the other bits of petals. It's bits. You can see it's a really similar colour. I think I'm gonna just press hard so that you can see it's a different colour. I think otherwise it might sort of get lost. I think it's all the same. It's nice to have a little bit of a different colour in places. Just checking you can still see. That would be embarrassing. I'm good at doing that, aren't I? Chattering away and getting... Um, not showing you what I'm doing. Okay. Now, over here, look, we have a flower that looks a bit like these two. And uh, one that looks a bit like the blue one. So I think um, this one and... No. Um, hang on. Let me show you my plan. So this one is going to be like these. Okay, so... I might just do it, hang on, let's put this one away. So those were in the cerulean blue middle. So that's what I'm going to do with this one in exactly the same way. So really straightforward, just the one colour. Dark here. And light there. Here I'm going to make it darker along here and then fade it sort of downwards uh, that one there and this one in here like that I will use the blender on it eventually and the same on this side a little bit messy but the blender will tidy that up these pencils um, work really well with a blender okay yeah <clears throat> sorry just pondering whoops and then I'm going to use the no oh, what did I use oh I've left it here the ultramarine 
I used for these two, I'm going to use for this one here. Oh, this one needed sharpening, didn't it? Oh, well, we'll persevere and hope it behaves. Oh, everything's moving. When I colour that right hand side, the book wants to move. <laughs> there we go. Now, looking at this, let's put it down so you can see everything that we've done so far. It's a bit wonky. There we go. Um, we've got these here, and I feel these need to be a sort of deepish purple. Like, yeah. Um, probably the purple lake actually okay which looks like this so so I'm going to leave all this bit green okay and just do these actual petals here okay I'm going to ignore those dots I actually want those black and uh, I haven't got a black pen in here but I will do them in a black pen I've got one next door um, at my desk so when I f go next door and finish this off after I finish recording I will put those dots in black so I'm trying to do this so it's dark at the bottom and lighter at the tip it's the way I've been doing most of the flowers here it seems to work well for this particular plant Now the pink, um, blue and purple combo is quite a nice one isn't it? Um, I'm not a big pinky person but when they're all mixed like this I like it and there are certain pinks I do really like. Um, the more sort of orangey pinks, not, not so much these, but um, that's okay. I do use the pinks, so that's that one. And these two, I'm going to leave the middle and just do the main um, bits of petals. Um, yeah, it's my mum's favourite combo, so if I'm doing a card for her, postcard or something, um, and a colouring postcard, I use those colours mainly. And uh, she seems to like it, which is good. Now these um, go down really well, I have to say. I don't think I've used them in this book before. I'm getting used to them. They are quite soft. They need quite a bit of sharpening, especially for little details. I don't think I would um, be in a hurry to use them in a book with lots of fine details like Lost Ocean. I think I would be um, on my Black Widows for that or um, my Ogresofts or my Polychromos, you know, something a bit harder and that sharpens to a sort of sharp, finer point but um, they're, um, they are nice on this paper now this central bit here I always struggle to wonder what on earth it is as well so I'm looking at it wondering I quite often do the framework bit in black well I've only done this picture once before that's how I did it as if it was some sort of spider, but I don't think it is. Um, I'm not really sure. Now, in the middle of these, I want something quite dark. Um, I've used the heather purple already, which is the darkest purple. I don't think it's quite what I'm looking for. Um, I'm thinking, do I go black? Yeah. It's going to put black dots here, remember, so I think I can get away with the black. So I'm going to use the ivory black and I'm going to do it quite dark and then fade it towards the edge of this. I don't want it really intense. And the same here. I'm going to blend that eventually so it'll be a bit more intense but it, it won't be really over the top. And I'm going to do each of these black as well. There we go. Now, 
these two I would like a pink a nice bright pink but not too orangey um, Hmm, those are all a bit red. Uh, that one's quite orangey. Hmm, so we have a lot of either very vibrant or very orangey pinks. Um, the aubergine isn't quite right. It's a bit reddish. The, um, um, I think the cobalt purple might work. I think we've used that, haven't we? Lavender. What's that? Mo. Yeah, we've used the cobalt purple. Hmm. Um, I think pink bloom and coral to skin tony. Um, sort of my flesh colour. And these, the azalea pink, that's what I'm going to use. It's not too, too orangey because we don't really want an orangey one. Here we go. Because it's not going to really work with the um, colours that we've got going already. I think that is fine. I'm going to fade it as we go down towards the bottom because I want the bit that's underneath to be dark under here. It would be shaded, so it's going to be darker. And same with this one. All the way down, fading it down to the bottom. Oops, hmm. I shall be um, erasing that later. So that's our azalea pink. Now we've got this one here. Um, it needs a purple. We have got this very pretty looking lavender that we're going to use. And just the same as before. Darker near the top, lighter near the base, and I can do these in lavender too. I'm going to have to hold the paper down. Can you see just about? And these definitely need a bit of blending. So say I will do that later. So I'm running out of time. We've got down here, we've got flowers here and here. We've got another little, I think that's definitely a leaf there. I think I'm going to do that as a leaf. I'm not going to do it black or anything. So we've got these two and this one. I'm thinking this would look good in pink, but I don't know if I've got any more pinks. Hmm, um, these two could be any colour really. I am going to use my Venetian blue for this, for those two, because it's a nice colour. I haven't used it yet. It's a slightly grey purple. I think it's rather nice. It's dusky purple colour. I've gone out of the lines a lot. I will tidy this up after and I will do all of them the same. And I've got to think about what colour to do these bottom flowers. I think everything else is leaf. So we've got our two colours for leaves to go. And um, I really want to do them pink, 
we might have to just repeat oops that was a long way out of the line while I was colouring without looking <laughs> don't do that I was thinking about what pink to use and looking up at pinks that I'd already used thinking a pinky purple colour that I'd used before might work really well because we've sort of run out um, but it won't hurt us because I can I can um, erase that mistake I'm thinking this little one up here but I can't remember what I used did I use I was going to that's right the purple I think I used the purple and that's what I'm going to use So I'm just going to work down the uh, down each petal, fading as I go, and then I'm going to go around here with a dark layer. And I'm just checking the time, sorry, I'm going to have to go. And these dots, I could have shown you all of it really, but I'm just limited for time, I'm afraid. So this one will be the same. My plans for the rest, I will zoom out, talk you through it all. And so this will be like this. Um, the, this shape and this shape are leaves. Um, I'm going to erase some of my mistakes and blend everything, and then do all of the all of the stems in the darker colour and each leaf with a darker base and a lighter top. I don't think there's anything in there that's too tricky. This bit it will be very dark in these sort of spidery looking bits. This centre part will be done in the very light colour, and this outside bit will probably be done in a mix oh no see that doesn't go anywhere does it I'll probably fill in that bit just up to there okay and make it a mix of the dark and light colors um, yeah and I think that's it I am considering doing a black background with a black pen I haven't decided for sure yet. What I would do is I'd definitely photograph it without a black background, with a white background. And uh, and then if I do decide to go for a black, I'll do it and I'll photograph it. And then you can decide which you like the best. I may not do that. I may change my mind. I might think it will look too dark um, or foreboding. And actually, I'm not sure if I've got a black pen so there is that problem too so we'll see <laughs> I have got a black pen um, but I don't know if it's got enough ink in to do the whole thing or um, I've got one the nib isn't thin enough so I'll have to have a think about that but that is me for now because I've got to write down all the pens I've used pencils I've used and uh, finish this one off later so thank you for watching sorry I I came to a bit of a sudden end, but hopefully that's given you everything you need to get going on that one. It, uh, I'm really unsure as to whether the orange butterfly was a good idea now, whether I should have done done it sort of pink or something. But anyway, when you do yours, you can decide. <laughs> it's definitely going to stand out, that's for sure. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a really lovely day and happy colouring.